Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton, and now we're gonna cover the pro division for the nine hole cup tournament. Um, so in this video here, you're gonna see a lot of drop shots, a couple really close misses, uh, but overall, definitely enough content to get you qualified to the top of your bracket and leave you with a really nice tiebreaker score, hopefully, you know, for the final round. Now, if you're not a subscriber, please become one. It would definitely mean a lot to me. And then secondly, if you do find the video helpful, if you just take a millisecond there to hit that thumbs up button and like the video, that goes a long way for me and I would really appreciate it. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop into hole number one. Hole number one is a great opportunity in crosswind to pick up an eagle on a par four. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a berserker. Now that's going to be a common theme in this tournament, okay? If you don't have a lot of berserkers, I suggest you head over to the golden shot and rack them up. Spend a couple bucks because this is definitely one of the easiest golden shots on the hard edition that we've ever had to load up on berserkers. You know, follow Tommy's guide. I always have been, have been for, you know, ever since I started the game and understood the ring system. But regardless, it's a really good opportunity to load up on berserkers and we're gonna use them in this tournament. Okay. The thing about this one is I want you to take a look at how distorted the rings are. That is a mess. So we are gonna pull over the bullseye. We're gonna start with that red ring because it's fully developed. And then we're gonna pull over to get an accurate ring count. It still becomes a little distorted. So you do have to use your best judgment. You can see here, I'm almost going with max overpower, but not quite. I even hit a great ball which is nice to see that we're able to get away with a great shot. We clip that rough and we roll out for a nice wedge shot towards the pin to pick up an eagle. And here's what that wedge shot looks like. You know, here I play this one at no percent elevation, max top spin, a little bit of side spin to the right. Get this ball lined up to pin. Only because the wind is so high, I decided to go ahead and do an accurate ring count. Normally I just offset the shot with the end ringer, but you know, these shots are typically great proof as well. As you can see here, great right, and we still sneak this thing in through the right-hand side of the cup. Perfect ball would have been dead center. We're off to a great start. And here is another um, shot. So I was able to hit this on both my accounts. And you'll see sometimes they just go a little bit differently. But here, you know, this one was better. I went with a little bit more overpower, as you can see. And this time we hit a perfect ball. And you'll see the difference with the overpower and the perfect ball. This one, we missed the rough. And we come about, you know, a green square away from, from hitting the pin and maybe uh, getting a lucky hole in one. I doubt it, it came in too hot. Uh, but regardless, that shot's on green, leaving us with a nice putt for the eagle. Okay, hole two, 35% mid. Uh, I won't walk you through the evolution of the hole in one on this hole. But on my other accounts, I missed barely to the right-hand side, and it came in a little bit too hot. So here, I went with almost four bars of backspin, but not quite. And I decided to just go ahead and offset the shot and change the elevation. So let's start from the beginning. My first attempt, I played 20% elevation. That shot was off. So now we're gonna play 35% at mid. So 35% at mid, Call that 3.8 back, and we're gonna be offsetting just like this. You can see here, blue ring almost at the rough line, just a little bit inside the rough. Perfect ball, and this thing comes in dead center for a hole in one. So we're off to a rock and start dropping the first two holes. Now that's gonna take us on the hole number three. Hole number three is pretty difficult. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna switch this to a berserker. Like I said, common theme. Now in hindsight, um, I would have rather played shot two with a guardian. I packed my cataclysm just in case, but a guardian with this drive is going to be better and you're gonna see why. And I wasn't sure how much top spin to play. So you see here, I went with six bars of top, two bars of left, pull the elevation, I could have even went with more overpower, you know, after we see this shot develop, I could have gone with more overpower or more topspin. Uh, there was room for either or both. 
That's gonna bring us into shot number two. Shot number two, you can see here, we're almost at max, well, we are at max distance of our wood club. Now, the reason I say I would rather have the Guardian is because the Guardian is a 179 power. The Cataclysm or Big Dog is 180. So we would lose one power, but we would gain a ton of top or of backspin. So since I'm having to go with overpower on this shot, I would have rather had more backspin to slow the ball down. You know, but regardless, uh, we do get lucky here and we stop the ball on the fairway right before the rough. So I do think a Guardian is a better play and that will make sure that our ball immediately stops on the green instead of possibly going into the rough. Okay, hole number four is a little bit confusing to me because I missed it um, both times to the left-hand side. This is again a situation to where I needed to add more elevation to my shot. This is 3.1 bars of top spin combined with two bars of right side spin. Now here, I was also running into a situation to where I couldn't find a good developed ball guideline. So I try to offset again. So you can see here, this is a pretty good offset. This is about a quarter of a green square to the right of the hole. Almost a 10 ring pull, which is one reason why I hate the Grizzly. But you know, this shot needs it. So even with a big pull, even with 35%, I miss both shots to the left hand side. Um, we need more offsets. I, I don't, I wouldn't add any elevation. So maybe we need to offset more or maybe we need to pull at a 1201. So I think one of those two things would be better. I don't have a whole lot of advice outside of that, but um, maybe a tougher hole in one, but it should be close. It's not that hard, we're, we're, we're close. Okay, hole number five, uh, another eagle for a par four. So you can see here, I'm lining up at the plus 11. You know, we can probably back this up to the plus nine or plus 10 because when I pull my rings, I still pull into overpower by about a ring. So I go with overpower and half a ball of curl to the left, almost half a ball of curl to the left. Perfect ball. And we rock this thing up the fairway and it comes in really nice and smooth. Gonna leave us for a thorn shot for shot number two. So. I'm gonna let you see how I played this shot. I played it uphill because of my miss on my first attempt. Now, I was in a little bit of a different area based off my drive, but you can see here, I did play this one minus 5% and I'm playing it at mid. That is the shot you are seeing right now. So minus 5%, which is uphill at mid, Perfect ball, which means we're gonna to get to learn from this, which is good for you. But you can see here, I burn the left edge of the cup. That's tough to miss that way. However, this is what I came up with. Okay, if I would have played this shot at 5% elevation, okay? So instead of minus five, if I would have played at 5% downhill, that would have made me pull two rings and that ball would have been dead center for a drop. So my suggestion on shot number two is absolutely 5% at mid distance, but you will need to check your own distance of your thorn shot because it depends on how far or how less yards you get on your drive is gonna determine whether you're at minimum or mid of your thorn. Okay, hole number six, also one we come extremely close to picking up the albatross on. We're gonna go bombs away with another berserker uh, here is my advice to anybody using money balls. If you have like, you know, a wind resistance one power five that gives you a top spin boost, excellent ball. If you have a wind resistance, you know, two or three power five ball, excellent ball. If we can reduce the wind, but keep maximum power, you're gonna be in a great, great shot. And the reason that I would like wind resistance two or wind resistance three is because that is going to really help you out with shot number two, because using a berserker on one account, I had 8.2 mile per hour wind when I took my shot at pin. And the other one was about six. I think this one is six. Anyways, one was over eight and the other one was around six. So if we can get more wind resistance, that's gonna really knock down that wind quite a bit. But you can see here, this is a nice drive. 
and it's always good whenever we can take a thorn shot for an albatross. I do want you to try to play this one 0% at mid. You can see here that I am not at mid distance, I'm more around minimum distance, but I, I missed both shots by about the same area. But again, two totally different wins. But uh, the shot here that I'm pulling, I don't remember what I played. I think I played 10%. Well, we're gonna see here, I'll know. Well, regardless of what I played that shot at, when I recalculated my app like I showed you a couple holes ago, uh, had I played it 0%, uh, the ball would have been in for an albatross. Either way, really good opportunity to pick up a drop. This is another great hole to pick up a drop. Again, same thing, Berserker. Um, if, you're an, if you're somebody who plays with money balls, you know, again, if you have anything with mega top spin, that's going to help you out on this hole. You might even be able to get to the green. So a really cool opportunity to try to get there. Uh, but regardless, you can see here a Berserker is plenty of firepower. Max overpower. Almost half a ball of curl to the right. Now, I did fire off a perfect ball with that much OP, which is always nice. We're going to get the most distance possible. But you can see here, you know, this ball comes really nice up the fairway, leaving us again for a short shot to pick up the Eagle on a par four. So this is great, great wind. This is going to be almost perfect headwind, which is the second base case scenario, in my opinion, to drop a shot. I do pull this 0% at mid distance of my club. Perfect ball. And this thing's going to come in really nice. Hit the pin dead center for an eagle okay hole number eight i was way off on my first attempt so i decided to try to play this this little slope here which i think is ultimately a fun shot i'm going to pull this one 10 percent at max but you can see here i'm just trying to visualize this ball guideline going to the pin trees get in the way so if you're good at pushing your rings, I do suggest you push instead of pull in this scenario. And go ahead and take a look at this shot and let's see what we do differently. We might need to add a little bit of backspin on the approach, but not much because we do want to make sure we find that slope at the back of the green and come back down towards the pin. But here this ball almost dives into the hole and then comes down the slope like we want, but that slope is definitely leaning from left to right. Uh, regardless, this is probably the most difficult uh, drop of the par threes, um, but I don't think any of the par threes are unrealistic to drop a hole in one. I do believe each one gives us an opportunity to do so. Okay. All right, hole number nine. So let's talk about hole number nine for a second. I decided to have a little bit of fun. So when my, when my opponent went first and I noticed we were getting direct tailwind, um, so I decided, well, when it's my turn, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull out a Berserker. I'm just going to let this baby fly and see if I can get to the green or close to the green on a par five. You know, I do weird things like this in a nine hole cup because I don't take them hundred percent serious. Uh, the prizes aren't that great. The clan points are terrible. So I just decided to sometimes just let it fly. So I want to show you my opponent's approach just in case you don't feel like gambling but you can see here, I actually do like what he's doing. He's trying to get the ball to go onto the left-hand side of the fairway here, leaving him with a nice approach for shot number two towards pin. Now, he hits the rough and, and rolls out. I don't think that's what he was trying to do. I would imagine he was trying to power the ball up the fairway, which is what I suggest you do. But I do like his approach to the left-hand side. So now it's my turn. And just like I said, I'm going to let this thing rip. Now, I went with, you know, six bars of top spin and two bars of side spin to the right. Max OP. I hit a perfect ball, which I was surprised. I can't hit perfect whenever I want to, but on these stupid shots, I'm, I'm hitting them. Now, here, I roll into the sand. So, you know, we're not going to be able to clear the sand. So we're going to need to back this up a little bit and take some of the top spin off and try to land before the bunker, all right? 
But regardless, like even if you do that and you go into the bunker, you're not going to screw up your hole. It is still a very easy eagle. Now you can see my opponent here uh, has a direct shot to pin. I mean, look at that. That is direct tailwind. This is a great, great opportunity to land this shot. He pulls this four and a half rings and 4.9 wind. I'll let you do the calculation. I didn't do it, but you know he did pull that four and a half. And he misses by about, well, not even half a green square to the left. So uh, ultimately a really nice approach that I wanted to show everybody. You know, and here, you know, for me, like I said, look, um, I'm at mid distance of my sand wedge. This is no big deal. Easily onto the green for an eagle. Hey, everybody, hit that thumbs up button. Uh, I will see you in the finals and best of luck. Thanks for watching.